All right, Bishop, you know, it's a, it's a lot of new people that just kind of saw the two previous interviews. Um, but what what is your origin story? You know, but before, let's talk about Bishop Nathaniel before he became Bishop Nathaniel. I met a brother named Black who gave me a flyer regarding the Holy Bible. And he showed me that in the Bible, our race is in the Bible, that we're the Israelites according to Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. I was taught by seven elders. There was Masha, Arya, Yaikob, followed by Lahab, uh, Yeshaya, Shah, and Kazak. Those were the seven elders from 1990 to 1995. What, cause it, it, it would set off all these different offshoots of different camps is because people couldn't really come underneath the leadership. Separate, the main thing that separates many of the, we all teach that we're Israel, that's number one. According to Revelation 14, 12, we all teach that we gotta keep the commandments and have the faith in Christ. The discrepancy comes, for example, 1 Corinthians 7, 2, where it reads, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman, every woman have her own husband. So many of the Israelites believe in polygamy, or polygyny as they call it today. Mm. Uh, so that caused an issue because, like myself, I said when I read that, it says let every woman have her own husband husband so that was a discrepancy so many of them want the multiple girlfriends and from what i can read i see one wife like it says and i'll give you another one first uh timothy chapter three and verse one where it reads let me read it it says this is a true saying if a man desire the office of a bishop he desires a good work bishop means leader it says a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, at the teeth. So reading that, from what I'm seeing, it says one, one. And we got to learn to grow together. Like uh, the scriptures say, the two shall be one flesh in Matthew 19. So I do know that in the coming kingdom on earth, the Bible prophesies that men will have more than one. But that's in the coming kingdom when we are changed still in captivity i know that under the old covenant or old testament when we were in our own land we ruled ourselves we had our own king we had different many different wives but when you get to the new covenant the new testament we were in captivity so from captivity from assyrian captivity babylonian captivity greek captivity roman captivity even today we did not have multiple wives living in captivity. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the other apostles and bishops of Great Millstone, honors to your other brethren, fellow believers and followers of this truth. Shalom to the elect. Anyway, I want to go on this video real quick with uh, Bishop Nathaniel, and he's telling this story at this man's uh, news channel i forgot this this jake's name uh of the africa diaspora diaspora channel he invites a lot of israelites on his channel like uh priest zabak bishop nathaniel um so they went into a little bit of the polygamy and i know he's talked about the history which uh the apostles of great millstone brought all that out about uh this man bishop nathaniel and who is you know who he came up under uh, but I want to go into uh, this topic with polygamy, uh, meaning multiple wives. And I don't know if Nate just didn't want to go dive deep into it and do the proper research or because of his programs that he have. Let me say that he's just refusing to acknowledge it. So he, he goes on to say that in our captivities, we didn't have multiple wives. Well, when you go back, when you understand captivities and over time how this man has learned, you know, when you go back to Egypt, let me get there real quick. There's a reason why there's parent plan hoods, right? There's a reason why there's putting us against one another and various other things I probably can't say in this video. It's this right here. Let's go to Exodus 1. 
And then I'll get the going into the polygamy and going into the research and show you that a bishop must be blameless. Having one wife is not what they thought it was. It says, now, the, now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto uh, his people, as Joseph slept, as he passed. And he said unto his people, behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. Now, how did that happen? Okay. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens. And they built uh, for Pharaoh treasurers in cities, Pithom and Ramses. And I believe it was Ramses II. Right. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Right. So this is proof that it's still they understand under affliction, the children of Israel multiplies. How does that happen? Not with one wife. <laughs> you got to carry that baby for nine months. If you're lucky, you got twins or triplets. And then that's when he orders uh, every firstborn child to be killed. Now, why did he do that? So that clearly proves that there's nothing to stop Jake from multiplying, man. Even in this captivity, you know, men have uh, so-called five different baby mamas. Guess what? They were all wives. So I'm going to just cut to the chase. Who's gonna, I was going to go to First Corinthians 7, but this kind of backs it up because it's a, it's a lot of reading, some commentary and um, understanding of, the, of this, what was going on in the church. This is First Timothy 3 and 2. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, right? Now, uh, it says vigilant, sober, good behavior. But I just want to get to that point. The husband of one wife, uh, as doing more research, um, they were told kind of like, you know, you had different practices where if a man had a wife, right, or he had wives and, and the one died, he was not to marry anymore, which Paul had to cut. These are the reason why the writings of Paul was there to bring order to the church. This is why he said that, because it was already well known that a man could have more than one wife. But we'll get into that in a second. In fact, just to summarize it, uh, it wasn't an issue for a man to have more than one wife because there's bishops that took hold of the offices uh, of, uh, you know, the presbyters. they took hold of um, the office and they had more than one wife. So they couldn't throw him out. But if a man had a wife and his wife died, then he wasn't to marry again. But this is why Paul had to bring back and said, if if one dies, if, his, if he becomes widowed, then, you know, the woman is uh, is allowed to remarry if she becomes widowed. So this is why I said husband of one wife, because there was a lot of marrying and going on uh, in the church. Then it, there was husbands. You can read all of this. You can go into more of the, the details of it. But they were what they were doing is they were sleeping around like like my elders and teachers and apostles and heads taught us what was going on in one west. And that's why <laughs> Apostle Tahar said, hey, man, we got to put a, a strike to this. And it's kind of crazy because this man, Bishop Nathaniel, is all about the law and the law. And that's in the law. That a man can have more than one wife. Where does it say it's not in the law? This is what, well, we're going to go into it a little more. I'm going to read a few commentaries, you know, because, you know, Jake ain't going to listen to what I say. You got to listen to what, you know, what it actually says. Um, which, again, we didn't have wives in captive. Man, come on. It says, uh, Paul alludes to the incidents no longer looked upon as shameful in Rome. He even in this indignation at the laxity of the morals of this day cites cases of women who reckoned their years rather 
by their husbands than by the consuls. Marital uh, martial rights of a woman who had arrived at her 10th husband. Right? So this is going into these women. They are looking at the men. They're great speakers or leaders. Uh, some of them had roles in the churches. Right? And then they even said a woman that was a certain age, uh, if she had a whole bunch of wives, husbands, she couldn't she couldn't be a, 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 a play a part in the church. So when a man when a, when a bishop, the reason why it says that a husband be uh, a bishop be blameless having one wife because in the church, you had all these women who had all these different uh, husbands, right? And they and um. They was maliciously doing this. It wasn't like they knew the law. They knew what they were supposed to be doing. Uh, and some of them did. But they maliciously were sleeping around and doing all kinds of wicked stuff. If you wake up to the day and you've repented. And the Lord said there was no sin against having more than one wife. Where do you get this law now that you start speaking and saying you, you, you can't have more than one wife? I don't really recommend it in this society. But ones that can do it, I mean, who knows? You know, I may, 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 other brothers may. But there's no law against, there's no sin for having more than one wife. It's either a sin or not. It says, in uh, 10 husbands in five years had eight husbands. Among the Jews, we know polygamy was then prevalent. St. Paul fully conscious of this low and debased moral tone which then pervaded all society in the empire and these few words condemned all illicit relationships between the sexes and directed they chosen persons to fill holy offices in the congregation of Christianity now I remind you these are commentators and um, theorists writing what uh, going into the actual text and going into the Greek you know, and bringing it out, you know, it says, this is another one. The apostle means therefore, and these canons is that such persons only were to be, uh, entrusted with sacred offices who in their married state had contented themselves with one wife and with one husband at a time, because, uh, thereby they had showed themselves temperament and the use of sensual pleasures. Hey, it was all kind of lust. Though the immoderate love of which uh, the Asiatic nations universally practice polygamy in like manner because according to the Lord's determination, persons who divorced each other unjustly were guilty of adultery. And that was part of the adultery. These men, they was taking on wives as concubines and not as even legit concubines when you really read the history. And they was kind of making whores out of them. And then they would get rid of them. And then other men, and of course, you know, women, they're going to find, they want to be with somebody. And then some of them was maliciously, purposely just sleeping around trying to get, you know, the hypergamy. Everybody thinks things are new. No, it's not new. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, it's, it still happens. Um, because according to the Lord's determination, a person divorced my unjustly uh, guilty of uh, adultery when they married themselves to others also because such really had more wives than uh, it says here also because such really had more wives and husbands than one at a time as was the case with the woman of Samaria you can read that when Yahweh said um, the, the heathen woman you had more you have many husbands and then people will say that that was an israelite woman well there was nowhere in any of that text where yahweh Shah said repent ye woman sumerian woman right that's another video she also went back to tell the other ones and they said we don't believe because you we believe because we see the messiah ourself but anyway the apostle to restrain these licentious practices which were common among the Greeks and the Romans. You know, kind of like orgies and stuff. That's what it's compared to. 
although you might not be all in this, but it's still compared to it. If you got a man passing his woman around to other um, men and a woman being passed around and jumping themselves between all these different men, as well as amongst the Jews, right? Ordered that no widow should be chosen to instruct younger women. But such has had been a wife of one husband only at a time. See that? The wife of one husband. Right? That's why it says uh, a bishop must be blameless and be a wife, be a husband of one wife, which actually is talking about a wife who supposedly only had one husband. Right? They word it and it did, you know, they're using the universal universal practices especially when they took the scriptures out of the Bible and gave it back to us, you know? You know they had to tweak, tweak a couple of things, man, to make it seem like, because our heritage, when we came here, was more than one wife. And they was like, nah. They remember the story of uh, Pharaoh, right? They know about the children of Israel. And that's always been the fear of losing that power. They know the history. So it says the husband of one wife, Right? Because that wife, going into the church, and I believe in Titus, she was supposed to teach the younger woman. But she can't teach the younger woman if she had 10 husbands. Right? So it goes on to say, the wife of one husband only at a time. <laughs> uh, this is virtually viewed of the Greek church, which requires all priests to be married. But forbids second marriage, this is another one, forbid a second marriage and required the priest who has lost his wife to cease from exercising his functions. So really in the Roman Greek church, if a man died, if man had a wife and he died, he wasn't supposed to remarry again. The husband of one wife. It says many converts of uh, it says Christianities would have more than one wife they are nowhere commanded to put away all but one like again if you converted and you was a bishop of a church you would have five wives what are you supposed to do drop the other four that's going very, the very against the very thing that Paul was speaking about then you would be committing uh, adultery uh, by putting your wives away for no reason And that was the bishop of the church, by the way. And in that time, going through what was happening in the church, like Bishop Nathaniel, he could, he should go by this, right? Because he has a big church, and in that church, that's where the adultery runs rampant. So he shouldn't be taking five and ten wives. But believe it or not, when you keep reading and you know going in all this, they still had concubines as well, right? It might not say it, but I was reading different ones. It says, uh, they're, no, they're nowhere commanded to put away but one, but it was not seemly that a man in such position should be a Christian minister who ought in all respects to be an example to the flock. So the bottom line is, the reason why I said a bishop must be blameless and have one wife Right, because if he decides to marry a woman that had ten husbands, it makes him blameful. So uh, it says um, the need caused no difficulty. Then, as now, as many women would change her partner, and with or without a so-called remarriage. Right. So this was really directed towards the women. It was directed toward the bishops too to be blameless, but it was directed toward the women because the women was the cause of the problem of these of all the adultery of the men. Uh, the women might have been getting smart with them or they might have been saying things, you know, because men just don't throw away wives like that. They was probably committing adultery on the men and the goddamn woman would leave or, or he would kick them out and they would lie and say, I did nothing wrong. So then it was so much confusion going on. Now, some of the men might have, like today, they might have slept with them and say, oh, you ain't no good. I got to get me another one. I want that one over there. Because they was following the Roman Greek, uh, the Greek customs. 
of trying to be with one wife. And there was no way Jake today, even a young man, hardly can deal with one woman. It's not natural. Not for the dogs, not for the animals, not for nothing. Right? So, uh, I just wanted to touch on that. It's way more on that. I read a lot of this, a lot of this on that. And hey, that's what it is, man. That's, it doesn't mean that you can't have more than one wife. It does mean in a, you know, in a, if you're in a church setting and you um, you got women in, involved and they're indulging themselves back and forth. Yeah. But that's a bishop, you know, and say to other men. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.